So I'm Bruce Empson, General Manager of Customer Services for the Earthquake Commission. So if you go back last year, um, in 2011, I think it was October, that TC3 came into existence. Up until then it was green. And then we had three shades of green, one, two and three. If you're in one, you're on hard rock. If you're in two, you're on solid soil. But if you're in three, you're in an area where the land beneath your home is um, more susceptible to, to failure or less performance in another event, another big earthquake. Now in TC3 there are 27,000 homes across the city. Of those, about 10,000 have foundation damage. So those are the homes that will need a bespoke foundation design. So the drilling is to ascertain for those customers what their soil looks like, what the ground beneath your home looks like, and that goes down as deep as 20 and 25 metres. So the drilling program is around trying to ascertain beneath your home what needs to be done to have your home either repaired or rebuilt. We started in March um, and if EQC just does its own drilling just for the customers in TC3 that we're responsible for, we'll be finished in March next year. Take a typical street in North New Brighton um, where we're drilling now and one or two houses in that street might be EQC customers, whereas one and two might be a Vero customer, or an IAG customer, or a Southern Response customer. So the logic is if we start at one end of the street and drill our way through, do all of the work, instead of having four or five drills coming in over different time frames, we get all of the data for everybody at the same time. Now that in itself slows things down as it would be perceived, but clearly there's a benefit, um, and that's everybody gets dealt with at once. But we're also trying to follow skirt. So the Stronger Canterbury Infrastructure Repair Team, um, who are doing all the underground services, sewer, water, etc. Because if we go up the street and start drilling holes and they've just repaired, um, or vice versa, it doesn't make a lot of sense and a hell of a lot of disruption to the community. So trying to align the recovery around um, a broader cover. Geotechnical assessment is not uncommon. Geotechnical assessment on 10,000 properties in one condensed period has never been done before. Right now there's 15 of them, that's one five, not 50, <laughs> as people might want. I can get 50 rigs but I can't get the 100 technicians that do this work. And right now we're out around the globe looking to um, resource further or more. The requirement from the Department of Building and Housing, the standard consentable building requirement, is two holes per section, so standard 600 square metre section, two bore holes. We've been talking to both Department of Building and Housing, CERA and of course the councils, WIMAC, Selwyn and, and Christchurch, around what's a better way to do this. And we have approval agreement that instead of drilling every home, we can drill roughly on a 50 square metre grid. So in layman's terms, every third home. Now that causes some concern because if you haven't drilled my home on my section, how can you determine what I need? Because we don't have to drill every home, we can drill about every third. If I cannot drive onto your section, and these are a little truck, yeah, so they're pretty disruptive. Clothesline's got to come out, kids' tramps have got to be moved, and we've got to get around the back of your section, take fences down, etc. So we've also got agreement that if we can do it on a grid pattern that will allow us to drill booms or driveways or common ground around the back of properties, um, we'll get sufficient data to satisfy both the geotechnical engineer, then the structural engineer who designed your foundation, so that the council is confident that the data is adequate, in fact it's more than adequate, to consent that dwelling. Customers will get a phone call and it says, can we come onto your property? Um, in fact, we're going to be working in your street, this is what it looks like. That's sort of about six weeks in advance of the rigs arriving. We ring and say, can we come onto your property, Mr Jones? Um, and Mr Jones might say no. Um, he's got um, prize chickens that he doesn't want us on the section upsetting. So we talk to Mrs Brown next door and then reset the grid around that. So we have to do what we call ground truthing and that's basically um, x-ray systems to tell us where services are or if there's anything we shouldn't be trying to drill. Um, so there's a, pro there's a proving process goes on. Then the rig comes on um, and the drilling is actually reasonably quick, sort of 
we're in and out of a property, a one property, not a street, in a day. What we do do is before we come onto your property, it's part of the approval process, is take photographs. So I've got a photograph of what your section looked like before we started, and we undertake to put it back to what it was when we leave. If customers want to know where we are now, where we've been and where we're going, if you go to the EQC website, um, we've got a program of drilling telling customers both where we've been, where we are and where we're going. And that's out there for the whole program. Uh, look, the data is um, intriguing. I'm not an engineer. <laughs> so what you get is a, um, a report that is unintelligible for me. It's designed for geotechnical engineers. If customers want to see it, it's available. And what it's effectively saying is from the surface to a point of solid, and that's what we're looking for, something that, that's hard to build on, um, this is what your soil looks like. It's like a photograph, a 3D photograph of your property. Now that goes to a geotechnical engineer. He gets this raw data from the drill or the, or the bore. Now the structural engineer and the geotechnical engineer work together to design a foundation for your home, for your property, for your 3D uh, dimensions. But all of that's um, available from either EQC if we're doing it for you or your insurer who's accountable for your repair or rebuild. What you'll see in your street is um, first of all signage that says beware, drilling going on, so some safety, safety requirements. The rig's about the size of a, um, a large delivery truck, so it's not a, it's not a big rig. They're a bit noisy, um, whether it's the drilling to core or the penetrometer pushing in, that's all pneumatic, so there's, a, there's a, an engine running going bang, 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 bang. If it's on your property, up your driveway, on your berm, um, we should get two or more done a day. So, yep, it'll be as much as a day's disruption. Bearing in mind it's a 50 square metre grid, it won't be too far away. The noise, if it's outside your window, will disappear after a day. I think the drilling program is enhancing progress. If you're in TC3 and you've got foundation damage of more than 25% of your homes, so if you've got less than 25% of your foundation damaged, then it's not a consented process and it's probably repairable without this requirement. But if you've got more than 25% of your foundation is damaged or it's destroyed, then you have to do this. This is a requirement to get a consent to repair your home. So no, it's not slowing it down, it's speeding it up. I absolutely understand people's frustrations. Um, the first earthquake was in September of 2010. We're nearly in September 2012. TC3 didn't come about until, in fact, September 2011, and the, the, the need or the determination for this process wasn't established until April 2012. We've drilled over 1,200 holes, in fact, I think it might be 1,500 holes now already. Um, there's 15,000 to do, so it's a big job, but we're as, as far advanced as we could possibly be given those constraints. If the earthquakes affected your foundations, it's anything more than 25% of your foundation is damaged. That might be it's tilted, it's cracked, it's collapsed, but if more than 25% of your foundation has been affected, and look, lots of customers will have seen laser levels used, which says this, these very smart pieces of intelligence that sit in one corner of your home, send out a beam that measures the level of, of um, collapsed or, or fall in your property. And some of that's as much as 100 and 200 mils. Um, so it's, it's that level of damage that we're trying to ascertain. But in broad terms, it's more than 25% will require a consent. So that's coming back to who approves the building of the home. So go back to council. And if it's more than 25%, the council needs a building consent, and that's why we're running the process. It depends entirely on your insurance policy. Um, so, as in my own case, I have total replacement insurance. So my insurance and company and I have a contract that says, you replace my home, put it back to where it was. So, in that case, I have an understanding with my insurance company, they'll replace my home. There are lots of insurance policies. Um, some, of them, some of them are fixed value, some of them are indemnity. Um, so you'd need to check your insurance policy and have that conversation with your insurer.
EQC or government's um, determination from the very first of this event was to deal with the worst first, those worst affected. There's a couple of categories there, that's the worst damage. Then there's the vulnerable. So we've got the elderly, the sick, the infirm, um, kiddies, etc. Now we're working with government agencies, MSD in particular, in terms of identifying those people. But I have a plea, if you have a neighbour or someone you know that's in that category, please let us know and we'll try and prioritise them ahead of the curve. Now bearing in mind EQC is responsible for about 100,000 rebuilds. I can just make the comment, we've done 21,027 so far. That's effectively repairing the entire city of Nelson end to end. Um, there's 80,000 more to go. So if you're not one of the 20,000, you're still waiting. So prioritisation is around the worst and we've chunked that up into a couple of areas. So it's if you've got more than $50,000 worth of damage, but under 100,000, so your EQC, we've committed to have your home repaired, completed, keys handed back, by December next year, so the end of 2013. For everybody else, we've promised to be done and dusted, EQC out of your hair, by the end of 2015. So vulnerable, over 50,000, and everybody else. Apportionment dreaded apportionment. It's necessary to do that to determine who's accountable for your repair. This circumstance that we're suffering in Canterbury is unique at a global level because nowhere else in the world has, an, has a location suffered what we've suffered. That is multiple large events in a condensed time frame. Let me try and explain it. After September um, of 2010, um, we thought there were about 50,000 homes would fall to EQC to repair and about another 10,000 that the insurers would be looking after. And then of course um, there was Boxing Day and then February, and February did more damage. There was then a challenge to government, EQC, around when its cover stepped in. So you'll appreciate if you've got uh, building insurance, building fire insurance, you have EQC cover, um, which entitles you to $100,000 of cover per event. If your home was damaged in September and February and June, or not September but February and June and December, we have to be able to demonstrate to the reinsurer who's writing that la very large cheque that they're actually accountable for that. So that's apportioning the damage to a home. Now of course after September we'd assessed 85,000 homes before February and then of course we had to go back and do it all again. Before we could finish the February uh, assessments, June struck and we'd just finished June, and we'd literally just done everybody. We'd committed to do it all by Christmas, and blow me down, 23rd of December, it happened again. So we are literally going through and attributing damage, so when the damage was done, to a date. So that we can say to those that are writing these large checks, you're accountable for this. So apportionment from a customer's perspective is irrelevant. We are obliged to repair your home. It's where the money comes from is the question. Uh, there are some 80,000 customers with land damage um, and we've started sending out information packs to them now and we'll have that done by the end of November so every customer will get a pack that effectively has um, their property, photographs of it, um, where observed damage has been noted um, and as much data as we can provide you that we have today around what we've observed. What we've then got to do is go back and ascertain what that means in terms of repair and the cost to repair and then what we'll recompense you for. The EQC model has always been uh, we put people on the ground to determine the damage, so it's to assess. We then turn that, um, that data into a quantifiable um, assessment of the damage, the cost to repair it, and we write you a cheque. With the event of uh, September and then all of these earthquakes, the government decided we would repair homes. That's not the EQC standard model. So with the land damage, we're going to do the same thing. We're going through now, and we have to get much more granular, so as opposed to what we've observed, we've got to get down to, so on your property, there is this crack here, or this split, or this undulation. Um, we calculate the repair of that to cost $5,000. Um, here's $5,000. Uh, you can do that by um, getting loads of topsoil yourself and some grass seed or getting some aggregate and filling it in or paying someone to come and do it. And we calculate the value. Some customers with the land damage um, will be, um, 
the damage will be catastrophic. And those that I can think of are those cliff edges in the Port Hills that aren't there anymore. So the insurance policy you have with EQC for your land will um, step in there and you get a calculated payment for the value of the area of your land insured by EQC. Now, our statute isn't your 600 square metre section, it's the platform, so the footprint on which your building platform sits, plus 8 metres around it, 60 metres to the road, if you have got a right of way, and around some appurtenant structures, <laughs> garages and the like around your property. What we don't do is pay for effectively the rateable value of your section. There will be a few customers in the city whose land is simply uneconomic to repair or isn't there. Those are the few, and I say a few, a handful only, who will get that total payment, maximum payment. So if your land's damaged and you've had liquefaction, I trust by now liquefaction's all been moved. Um, we've either done it ourselves or our neighbours or someone have helped us do it. Um, if your land is spread laterally, you've got a big crack, um, that comes under the same heading of um, we will compensate you for the damage to your land. So we'll write you a cheque for the calculated value of repairing that. Um, and that'll be up to each of us to either do it ourselves or have someone come and do it for us, so we'll pay you the value of having that done. Now if your house is being rebuilt, of course, I expect that whoever's repairing your home, either Fletcher's EQC or indeed your insurer, whoever's doing the building for them, will do lots of the land repair as they rebuild your home. 